and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival. Please welcome your host, Chef Daniela Malfitano. Hi guys, how you doing? One person gave me a mic. Hello to you. Hi everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Chef Daniela Malfitano, your festival host, and we are so thrilled you're here officially. Welcome to the 2018 Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival! Yes! It is such a good time at this festival. We are having a blast on week two. So before I begin, let me just kind of introduce what you can see. We have over a dozen delicious festival marketplaces. There's one here, LA style, and one here, nuts about cheese. And we are featuring all California grown flavors. So check them out. You do not want to miss any of them. They are all super delicious. It's also exciting to see top chefs in action here on this stage, as well as the main Palisade stage and at the Hyperion Theater. So you don't want to miss out because there are still seats available for Guy Fieri tonight. Tonight is March 9th. He is going to be at the Hyperion Theater doing a very fun live celebrity chef demonstration. So definitely decide to check that out if you want. You can go to Disneyland.com slash food and wine to reserve your tickets. And we also have space available for the winemaker dinners where you can sample and savor exceptional wine from all over the state of California, which is pretty cool because the food and wine pairings are exceptional here at the resort. And you can go and check out our festival guide or our info boards. There's one right behind me here. That'll tell you everything you need to know about all the events that are happening at our festival. So, are you ready to meet our visiting presenter? Yes! Okay, let's get started. And I'm gonna bring out our very special guest from Enzo Olive Oil. Please join me in welcoming the owner of Enzo Olive Oil, Mr. Vincent Ricciuti. Hi, Vincent. Good afternoon, how are you? How you doing? Good. Thank Good. you so much for coming. Absolutely. I'm so excited to have you here. You guys, I've been like thrilled because you've been on the docket for quite some time. And this guy is a master olive oil connoisseur and taster. He knows everything there is to know about what's in olive oil, how to use it, and how to taste it. So we're gonna do all of that and more. And I just wanna get us started out with my very first and simple question, but not so simple. How long have you been in the olive oil business? So our family has been in agriculture in California um, since about 1914, when my great-grandfather Vincenzo came here from Italy. Um, that's been since passed through, my grandfather, my father, and now myself. Um, we've been known to grow peaches, plums, nectarines, stone fruits, all kinds of different products. Um, however, in 2008, our family made a decision to get into the olive oil business. And uh, in 2011, we had our very first crush in uh, November of 2011, and Enzo Olive Oil Company was born uh, in 2011. And it's actually a really fun history to learn about his family. Not many people know that much about their family lineage, but they started out as vegetable farmers, and then you moved on to plums and cotton, which is an unlikely combination. Right. Do you know why? What's the background my, behind that? My great grandfather wanted and grandfather wanted to diversify, so they were you know locked into one thing, and that's where you know that was always been the driving force between our, behind our family is always wanting to innovate and do different things um, in agriculture and so you're not you know leaning on just one commodity that year so if the uh, plum cro uh, crop was bad cotton could lift you up um, you, you could be diversified and then they moved on to like stone fruit like you mentioned and now they produce not only olive oil but almonds yep we also grow almonds um, and we have a wonderful almond butter as well uh, under our Enzo brand and uh, yeah, we have all kinds of different products. Okay, amazing. And we're gonna get a chance, you guys, to actually taste some of these and, and actually talk about some of the products that you're featuring here. Um, so let's get started. Where is the, the farm located? Where are you guys located now? So our farm is located in the Central Valley, San Joaquin Valley, um, in the Fresno region, um, and actually in Madera. So just uh, about 30 minutes north of uh, downtown Fresno. Okay, how many people have been to the Fresno area? Great. Oh, that's there you go. There's a lot of hands. And how many people are familiar <laughs> with Enzo Olive Oil? A couple people. Oh, nice. Great. Okay, and is this a place where people can stop by and take a farm tour if they want? Yeah, we have a retail store called okay. Enzo's Table. Um, it's right in Clovis. Um, encourage people to stop by. We're tasting things daily. Um, and if you want a tour of our mill, you can set up that by appointment. Um, and definitely recommend that during harvest. You can actually see how we make the olive oil. 
So let's go back a little bit with the timeline. You guys actually started in 2008, and that's when you sowed your seeds, right? That's when you got it all ready, and you built up this olive orchard, and it took how many years um, to actually begin to bottle the olive oil? Sure, so once we planted the olive trees, it takes about three years for them to actually mature to have um, to have the olives ready. So in that timeline, um, I actually traveled to Italy with my grandfather and got to um, experience um, doing some research and seeing mills and um, picking out the equipment we wanted to bring back to the United States to actually make the oil. So it takes about three years in that time frame. And do you actually start from a seed? No, so we actually okay. buy from a nursery a little tree about a this little big. Tree. Yeah, it's actually like a little, uh, just a little tiny tree planted in the ground. Um, our trees are planted um, in a vineyard row. Uh, so it, it man uh, imagine just like you would have a, a, a grape vineyard. So they're very close together. They look like a trellis. Uh, so they're not your traditional huge olive trees. These are grown as a head so we can mechanically harvest them. And educate me, is it called an olive orchard? It's a grove. It's a grove. Yes. Thank you, because yeah. now I've been saying it wrong for a good week. So Usually now you, green, you know, all, when you have a um, evergreen tree, yes. that's a grove. Okay, that's a grove. Got it. Okay, so it's an olive grove, yeah. good to know. And how many acres do you guys have? Um, on the olive oil side, we have about 400. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. How many trees is that? That's a lot of trees. That's a lot of trees. I, I haven't counted He's them. never actually counted. <laughs> that's your homework project. There you go. <laughs> okay, so now we know it takes about three years to go from actually, um, you know, make, pressing the olive oil um, to, or growing the, the plants and then actually harvesting and pressing. So can you talk us through what happens at this point? We actually press the olive oil and how does it get from a pressed oil to a bottle? This is something that you know very, very well. Yeah, so, um, it's actually one of my favorite things to do okay. is harvest. So harvest usually lasts between October and Dece uh, um, October and November, and we um, about 40 days in there. And so once the olives are picked, they're picked with a mechanical harvester. So this harvester actually drives over the top of the tree, shakes the olives, they come off um, into bins. The bins get brought to our olive mill. Um, there, they're dumped onto a line, quickly hand sorted to get out, you know, different sticks and and those types of things. Then they're put into a washer. That washer um, rinses the olives very quickly. They then go into a hammer mill. What that hammer mill does is there's actually three hammers inside and spinning at 3,000 RPMs. Wow. Completely pulverizes the pit, the olive, the leaf, anything that goes in there comes out as a paste or a tapenade, whatever you want to call it out, out the other side. From there, it gets pumped into our malaxers. The malaxers um, are Imagine like a giant uh, uh, blender or mixer, and it's kneading that paste. And it's kneading the paste for about 30 to 45 minutes. What that's doing is it's slowly breaking down the cell walls of those olives and to release the oil. Once that it goes through that, it gets pumped to our first decanter. That decanter spins at 3,000 RPMs, and it separates the solids from the liquids. The solids get pumped out, and we actually send this, that waste to an organic dairy for, for feed. Oh, okay. And then the oil and water mixture gets pumped over to a vertical separator, which spins at 7,000 RPMs, and that's separating the oil from the water. The oil that comes out of that vertical separator is what we call oleo nuovo, the new oil of the year, um, and this is the best that oil will ever be is at that point of harvest. From there, we pump it to our storage tanks where we wrap, wrap the oil off any uh, more sediment, just like they do in wine. Um, but from there, it's ready for bottling and um, to be in your homes. Wow, fascinating, right? That's a lot of equipment. It's, it's, it sounds like a lot. It's only about like five or six pieces of equipment. But right? very important but pieces. But very important pieces and very, very expensive very, very pieces fast. of equipment. <laughs> very right? expensive, that's right. <laughs> and so how much water is actually being extracted versus olive oil? So there's not that much water in the, in the, in, in the olives. And we actually, through our growing, um, how we grow the olives, it's actually quite important. So we actually deficit irrigate leading up to harvest. We okay. don't irrigate as much starting okay. in August so that we, so that the tree actually pulls that water out of the olive, um, makes it easier for us uh, so we don't have to pull it out in the mill, um, and also you know, saves some water. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the paste that you send away to the dairy farm, that's just at, you know the, whatever's left over. It's not a, sort of a dry, olivey. It's actually still pretty wet. Oh, it is. Um, but uh, that's because we've added some water into the decanter okay. and different things. But um, yeah, they mix it into almond holes or different 
cattle feed uh, materials, and they like it because there's still some fat content in there from the olives. So it's actually the, the dairymen actually really really enjoy it. Interesting. Okay, so let's talk about um, actually using the olive oil and how to store it properly. So um, the first thing I, I'm curious about is why is olive oil always bottled in a dark bottle? So first, that's our this balsamic, is balsamic vinegar. Balsamic. <laughs> um, and so all those, you want to buy olive oil in a dark green bottle, not a clear bottle, because yes. UV light um, is bad for olive oil. There's three bad things for olive oil, light, oxygen, and heat. Okay. So you want, when you store your olive oil, you want to make sure that you store it um, you know, in a cool, dark place yes. um, and away from light. So the green bottle is actually very important um, so that you know, it blocks some of those UV lights to hitting the olive oil. So very similar to wine. Yep. Okay, great. And I want to talk about this really important label. You have a couple different stickers here. You, of course, have the USDA organic label. And you also have the California Olive Oil Council sticker, certified extra virgin, and it gives you the year. Let's, let's discuss that a little bit. Yeah, so we have... Um, our olive oil is certified extra virgin by the California Olive Oil Council. To get that designation, we actually have to send our olive oil off to the COC um, and to the laboratory. And the laboratory takes um, chemical readings to um, understand, you know, make sure that we hit those criteria. And then the COC has a taste panel. So they actually taste our olive oils to make sure that they are absent of defects. So the definition of extra virgin is the absence of defects. And uh, we want to, the COC then approves our oil, we get a certificate, and we're able to put that sticker on our bottle. That's really cool. And um, so after every harvest, they actually send a sample, which I learned about just a couple hours ago. I think that's really nice. So you're really constantly checking the flavor of your harvest each and every time to make sure that the integrity is there and it's exactly the way that you want it before it's at get sent off to you guys. Absolutely. And the other thing, you know, the other sticker I see is on our on our, our basil bottle here is, you know, our the awards. Good food awards. Right? So we you know we enter our all of those and awards every year. Um, yeah. in since two thousand eleven we've won over hundred and eighty five different awards wow. for for our taste and quality and um, so that drives us even more to make sure that we fine tune every harvest to get more and more Everybody wants to win, so. Everyone wants to win, but not everyone's a winner, and you are. <laughs> All right, so let's taste some olive oil, and let's taste some balsamic, can we? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so like I said, Vincent actually went to school for this, you guys. And tell us a little bit about your training. What was that like? So the the school I went to is called O'Now. It's, it's actually a university situation in Italy, and they had a class in New York uh, about four or five years ago, um, So, which was really fun. And I got to go there for a week, and. The instructors came and we got to uh, test uh, uh, or sample different all those all week. Um, and at the end, there was a, an actual test where you have to sit down and blind taste um, uh, 25 different oils and you score them properly. And if you didn't score them right, you'd fail. Uh, but I passed, thankfully. Um, and yeah, so that's. And what are you looking for? Like, what is on your scorecard? What are you tasting for? Yeah, so you're looking for um, bitterness, uh, pungency, uh, rancidity, a um, whole list of, of different things right. um, that they want, the specific things that they want to make sure that you can pinpoint when tasting or smelling. So very similar to beer tasting and very similar to, to wine tasting also. Yeah. And do you also evaluate the color? No, it's actually, you get a blue glass. The olive oil is poured in a blue glass. Oh, interesting. And so you cannot see color. So ah. color is a false um, indication of flavor and different attributes. You can have a really, really green olive oil, yeah. but it can still be bad. Yep. So um, color has no, um, it's not anywhere on the scorecard. And so it's really all about taste here. Okay, shall we? Yeah, of course. Okay, let's get let's get started right with our medium olive oil. Yeah, so we grow three different varieties of olive oil. Okay. We have Arbicina, Arbosana, and Corniki. Okay. The one that you're about to try is our Arbosana. And the, these are fancy names for the different varietals of olives. Correct. Okay. Correct. So first off, you want to take your little cup, put it in the palm of your hand, cover it, and kind of warm it up a little bit. When you taste, when you professionally so taste your drink. You want to make sure that the oil is around 82 degrees. Okay. And then you want to smell it. That's right. So that smells nice, right? Yep. Warm it up again and then give it a little taste. And then a slurp. So when you're slurping it, you're trying to get it over the palate, over your palate. You'll get a little pepper kick in the back. When the, that pepper kick on the olive oil, it's actually a really good indicator of the polyphenol. So 
Polyphenols are the healthy attributes of olive oil, and they will scratch the back of your throat, and that's a good thing. So that means that it's a fresh oil. The, the older the oil gets, the, that word falls off. Okay, everyone, polyphenol. Yeah, that's polyphenol, a big word. that's a big word. <laughs> okay, I like that. It has a really mild flavor. I can taste the pepperiness in the back of the throat, though. That's really good. Okay, so we'll move on from the medium to the bold. Sure. Okay. So we have the bold. What, what is the, the big differentiation between these two? Yeah, so on ours, on our varietals, our, our, uh, they're really similar on their palate, especially this year. But the biggest thing difference with our bold, which is our Corniki olive oil, uh, Corniki olive, is the polyphenol count. So the, the Corniki this year had an off the chart, the polyphenol number was like 300 points higher than the medium. And so that's why it still gets the indication of our bold. So same thing. Okay. Warm it up, smell it, and taste it. It's a little bit sweeter, um, but again, the, the polyphenol comes. Wow. Yeah. You can really it. mm, it's sweet. I like that. Yeah. Really tasty. Thank you. Mm, delicious. And then in terms of these two olive oils, can you use them pretty much interchangeably? Yeah, okay. absolutely. You know, I use, my favorite is our medium. Okay. Uh, is our Arbisana. I use that okay. one literally every day at home. Um, what's Great. What's really nice about the medium is you can bake with it. Um, you can use it in all different kinds of, uh, of, of uh, uh, different ways in the kitchen. I love to make it all. My, yeah. My favorite recipe, I'm going to share this with you, is an olive oil brownie. Oh, Have delicious. you guys ever heard of an olive oil brownie? It's just, you replace the butter with olive oil, and I'm telling you, it is so darn delicious. Something about the cocoa powder and the olive oil pair really well. Yeah, I mean, we this week um, at home, uh, before I came up here, uh, my wife and I were playing around with olive oil pancakes, so which are absolutely really delicious. Um, so there's, I mean, anywhere that yeah. butter is used, you can substitute olive oil. Yes. Olive oil, chocolate chip cookies, all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on to some of the, the flavored oils. These are a real big hit here at Disney Disney California Adventure. Um, they've sold more of the garlic than any of the other We flavors. have. We've sold a lot of garlic. Good to know. I'm actually going to, let's do it with the basil let's first. Let's start with basil. Because then we won't taste the basil. Okay, because this will just <laughs> mute everything out. So the basil, how we make our basil olive oil is really special. We actually take fresh organic basil leaves okay. and we crush them with uh, with the olives. So when we're making the olive oil, we crush the, the, the leaves with the olives. And this is our latest Good Food Award winner. Um, I love the basil right now. It's spring, great for salads. Um, with the pears really nice with like a red wine vinegar for a salad or a champagne vinegar. Um, really nice. and. Um, so. Are you growing the basil as well? We're not. We're okay. getting them from another Good local farmer. Yeah. yeah. And how much basil do you actually need? A or, lot. Or how much garlic <laughs> or how much lemon? You know, yeah, so, like... it's about, so like when we do our crushes, um, it's like for every bin of, uh, for every three bins of olives, it's one bin of whatever that ingredient is. Wow. So, so a third is yeah. going to be the flavored component. Oh, wow. Really nice. Mm. Slice some tomatoes, some mozzarella, oh. put that on top, we'll see how you're done. Gee, you guys have to try this. That is the best basil olive oil I've ever tried. It's Thank you. super subtle, yeah. which is great. I love that because it still tastes like olive oil. Yeah. Thank you. Alright, now for the garlic. Okay. So garlic. A lot of people, like, it's first when they come up with those garlic olive oil, what are you supposed to use that for? Yes. And it's really, once you start explaining, then they buy one. Um, mashed potatoes. Instant mashed garlic potatoes. Mash, instant garlic, instant mashed garlic mash. Potatoes. That's right. Instant garlic bread, french fry, you can pour it on your french fries. You can get some Disney french fries, pour this on top. Great. <laughs> you have garlic french fries. And um, are you roasting the garlic before? No, it's with raw garlic. Okay, it's raw. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, there you go. Thank you. This one might... You can just smell it. I mean, it's just... Oh, wow. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, there's no need to warm this one up. No, you don't need to warm it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. It's nice. Oh, it's so nice. It's just like fresh, sweet Fresh cut garlic. Garlic. Not bothered, not roasted, not salted, not grilled, not Nothing. anything. It's just pure garlic. 
super delicious. Yeah. For all you people that go to, you know, giant games up in San Francisco, yeah. garlic fries right there. That's how you make them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and can we try one of the, the citrus oils? Because I've never had, yeah. I've had a lemon, but I've never had clementine. Um, and I'm really curious to, to taste the, so the flavor profile. Yeah, absolutely. So the, clem the clementine, another good food award winner. Um, and this one was our first, the very first uh, crush that we ever made, which was uh, three years ago. Um, and it's really special. So we, again, we, we take clementine, so like, you know, halos, cuties, those things, and put them into the crusher with the olives. Um, awesome to bake with. Those brownies, use this. Oh, Game yeah. changer. Game changer. Yeah. Absolutely. So you do want to heat, you just want to warm this one up yeah. a little bit. And this is also a good food award winner. It is, it is. Wow, good to know. It's really nice. So there's, yeah. back home there's a there's a uh, bean to bar chocolate company that's making a chocolate bar and um, they made a chocolate bar with this inside oh. in, the, in the bar and with the clementine and um, it won, you know, best of show at the San Francisco Chocolate Salon last month and yeah. so this, this thing, the clementine is really special. It's really special and none of these oils are like super pungent in the, the flavor component. They're really mild and you really get the olive oil note first and then the flavoring is just a hint, which is what makes these very, very special. I love that. That's definitely my favorite. Thank you. Yeah, delicious. Okay, so we have to try some of your vinegars. You want to try some of the vinegars? Yeah, can we? Yeah, let's go with the, uh, the apple. Okay. So our apple vinegar. So all of our vinegars um, are barrel aged. There's okay. no added sugar, no added caramel. They're real balsamic vinegars, um, and and uh, delicious. The um, the apple. This is Trent, yep, right? Yeah. The apple we're using Trentino apples, um, barrel aged with with the balsamic. The color is beautiful, so it's not it's not as dark as our traditional or our fig because the apple vinegar um, and the apple cider that's in there. Um, it's going to be very sweet, um, but it's awesome on salads, drizzling it on top of a pork chop. Um, anyway, cheers. Cheers. Here we go. It's really nice. Oh my goodness. That is so nice. Yeah. It's like honey. It is. It's, the honey's a good idea. It's good. It, it just tastes like a, a nice, sweet honey vinegar. And you can get the notes of apple. This would just be so delicious with nuts, something with nuts, Ice like cheese. a walnut cheese. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. And it, just one question about this. Is it barrel aged first before adding the apples, or is it barrel aged with the apples? With. Okay. And how long does that process three years. take? Three years. Yeah, to make and then this. We'll, we cook. Then after the three year barrel age, we'll reduce it through a cooking process. Okay. But again, I think it's really important that you know, there's no added sugar, no added caramel, no coloring. Yeah. Like the, these things are what they are. Yeah, just the natural ingredients. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That was fun. Okay, so now we're going to demo a recipe. Um, this is Vincent's recipe, uh, and he loves this. We're going to do a delicious, well, why don't you introduce it? Yeah, so this, uh, this bruschetta that we're making today is um, a great example of something that you can make very quickly with a couple of our ingredients. Yes. Um, we're also selling at our booth our pestos. We have four pestos. We have a basil, sun-dried tomato, sweet pepper, and artichoke lemon. For today's recipe, we're going to be using our basil pesto. Um, but again, it's su super simple. So when you have people coming over, this is a super simple recipe to use. While you might be doing more work in the background, they can um, enjoy this um, in a glass of wine. And you can you know, enhance this recipe with anything else that you might have on hand. I really like that this is very simple and it's just using some of the, the purest ingredients, the things that are important, like the tomato, like the basil. Um, but you can, of course, use like pancetta. If you roast it off a little sheet tray of pancetta, that'll give you a nice crunch and a nice like bacony flavor. That could be really nice. Of course, roasted garlic would be great in this. And then if you wanted something that gave you a little bit more protein that was vegetarian, something like a white cannellini bean mashed up on the uh, pieces of toast here, um, that would be delicious. So to make the bruschetta, I'm actually going to start with just a, a loaf of sourdough uh, bread here, and I'm going to slice it with a serrated knife on the bias. Do you like to do it this way, or do you do like straight, straight pieces? No, bias is nice. It gives yeah. you more space to uh, plate on top. Gives you more surface area. Yeah. 
So, and then you can put these onto a sheet tray, bake them off in the oven until they're just nice and crispy. Is that how you like to do it? Yep. And yeah. Sometimes too, you can take uh, one little, a piece of uh, raw garlic and yes. shave it on top of that bread. Um, the, the garlic actually melts right into the bread, which is really nice. Gives it a little crust. Yeah. And I like to do that as soon as it comes out of the oven. Just yep. a piece of garlic should just rub it all over the bread. And toast those off, and then we have these already pre-toasted here. So, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna just start with probably <laughs> three or four. I'll do four here. And you guys have to go over to uh, the Enzo Olive Oil booth and check out this pesto. It is to die for. It's super flavorful. You really get the Enzo Olive Oil notes, and you get the basil, which is great. It's very fresh. So we're using a pastry bag, which is a great tip. You can just put this into a Ziploc bag and snip off the end and to make yourself a homemade pastry bag, or you can buy a fancy one, which is what we have here. And then to each of the pieces of bruschetta, I'm actually going to layer it with the, oh boy, with the basil pesto. Share some. Share there some, go. there we go. Now both sides will be flavored. That's right. Oh, and I love that this is nice and really not like a smooth, completely smooth basil. It has a nice consistency. So I can see the pieces of uh, garlic in here. That just looks so good. It's like calling my name. So in our pesto, uh, in the basil pesto, we have uh, uh, Parmesan, garlic, uh, and, and also you know, normally in pesto you have pine nuts. But our basil pesto, uh, we took out the pine nuts. We're almond farmers, so we put almonds inside. Oh, great. Um, yeah, so it makes it, uh, it gives it a, a nice little uh, spin on it. Great, yeah. Okay, some heirloom tomatoes here, just cut in half. Yep. I like the Again, two or three. Perfect spring summer recipe. I mean, Absolutely. And you know, we're talking about four, four or five ingredients here. Really simple um, and really easy to put together. Really easy. And we have some pickled shallots. So this is just a really simple recipe. You can quick pickle something with a little bit of vinegar on a pot with some spices. I like juniper berry. I like whole black peppercorn. Whatever you like work really well. Maybe a little bit of sweetness, maybe some sugar if you want. And don't be scared about the quick pickle. It's very simple. Very so simple. It, it sounds very sophisticated when you, your guests come over. So I quick pickled it. We're very impressed, but it's very easy. It's very easy. And how many uh, the pestos? Do you have just this one pesto? No, we have four. So okay. we, have, we have the basil, uh, sun-dried tomato, artichoke, lemon, and sweet pepper. Wow. And you, got, you can intermix those pestos. You can yeah. make um, on this exact dish four different ways you could do one each bruschetta could have a different pesto if you yeah. want which would be really fun with different toppings i like to do sometimes a bruschetta bar where you're just setting up a bunch of different toppings and people can help themselves which is Sounds really awesome. nice and then of course you can't forget the basil no just little tiny bits of basil how cute these are right i'm just going to place these right on top a couple for each so you can I like tell it. spring is just starting with those the, how little those leaves are right, right? <laughs> spring, has, spring has sprung okay And then, I don't know about you, Vincent, but I love to just top off uh, bruschetta on a platter, if I'm going to serve it on a platter, with fresh uh, olive oil, just kind of drizzled right on top to yep. kind of moisten it even more. You have to tell me that. Olive oil it's, goes on everything. Okay, right, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, a little bit of sea salt, or I'm going to use kosher salt here because that's my favorite salt. Do you have a favorite salt? I do. I like sea salt. Yeah. That's, that big, the, big, the bigger the flake, the better. Absolutely. And then, why not? Freshly ground black pepper. And then I'm going to use the medium. I just think that it's going to be the most mellow and delicious. It's going to give you great olive oil flavor. And then just a trick that I like to use is I take my thumb and just right over and allow it to just kind of drizzle out. I don't want it to just overcoat the bruschetta here. And that's it. Looks Pretty beautiful. simple, right? You can totally do this at home. And I hope that you do. All right, well, does anyone have any final questions about Enzo Olive Oil? Yes. Great, can you just use the basil olive oil on a salad with Absolutely. For a vinaigrette? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. You can use that, just a little bit of salt, pepper. Super, super simple and clean. Super simple and clean. Maybe some lemon juice if you wanted some acid, but that would be totally delicious. I would even say, it's a really great question, when I was tasting the clementine, that would be a really great way to actually uh, you know, add fruit to a green salad. 
really delicious. Okay, that is all the time we have. If you have any further questions, Vincent will be just right here. You can ask him right off the stage. Let's give a huge round of applause for Vincent. Thank you so much for being here. And to all of the companies, we love having you. Thank you very much. And you guys, please stick around. Next up is our family time demo right here on the stage at 145. We are going to feature Sweets a la Mode with a very special little guest. So please join us. And don't forget, you can go to Disneyland.com slash food and wine to purchase tickets for any of our signature events. And our festival continues through April 12th, so we hope that you'll be back for more fun, you guys. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining us for this special presentation. Please enjoy the rest of your day at Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival.